everyone, welcome to the Ranting Shop with me, Melissa. I was so busy yesterday, I had no time to do the review, but I'm back and I'm ready to do it. Let's get straight into what happened on the Put a Ring on It reunion show. So, first of all, it was very obvious that Kenneth was dressed like a bum who hadn't slept in years. It's like he just came there, took any type of clothes threw it on him and came to the reunion and um it made him look exactly how shorty portrayed him as which is a uh, kind of like a deadbeat so to speak now the fashions look really classy this time around except for the aforementioned bum now the takeaways i wish that women the woman that she fought, I think her name is Le Lasherie, would have attended um, because that was the most ridiculous displays of low self-esteem I ever saw. And then she had the nerve to make comments like it was past her bedtime when the guy she was on a date with at the time was clarifying the conversation that him and Lushery had after she and Alfonso left. I mean, my point is, it's easy for you to, like, throw jabs at people when you're not there to respond to it. So I wish she was there to respond to it. I'm pretty sure she would have gave Shay a little bit of excitement because she didn't have nothing going on on this reunion show, really, like, to be honest, Shea and Alfonso were the least interesting on the reunion. If we listen to the recap of Alfonso's date with the young woman, I think her name is... I am Taisha, or not Taisha, I don't even know. Like, the girl that Alfonso was on a date with, the last girl, he stated it wasn't that he wasn't tempted, it was that he was just afraid of Shay. So I do agree with the young lady that he's in fact afraid of Shay leaving him or the consequences of Shay's raft when she finds out things that he's done. So now Shay's sorry, she talking about the physical differences to prove that he's not afraid of her was really ridiculous because regardless of the size, he was in fact operating in fear on that date with that young woman. She apologized for the disgusting display that she had at that um, double date situation, but for some reason, I don't believe anything that she had to say. I don't think her apology was genuine. Um... I wasn't surprised that she went, like, what did I have? I wasn't surprised that um, Alfonso was keeping things from Shay. And I also wasn't surprised when she called off the engagement after she found out what he was keeping from her. I wasn't surprised that she went back either. I'm sorry, I wasn't surprised that she left. And I wasn't surprised that she came back. The lifestyle ain't nothing to play with. She also clarified why she called him her husband, which made no sense to me, but okay. All in all, they're back together and expected to get married later this year. Good for her if that's what she wants, period. I have nothing else to say about she and Alfonso. Now let's address Charlene and Otis. It appears that Milan ha had a very clear mission which was to prove that Otis was full of ish but despite her revelations Charlie did not seem phased actually she posted something addressing this on her social media essentially saying that the lady needs to take accountability for her part as well in her most recent post, Shalina said that can't nobody convince me of anything. I don't care about what was said and allowed at the reunion. The DMs weren't deleted. I saw everything. I saw the messages, baby. The fight was too hard for someone you don't know or care about. Please stop. First of all, we aren't even allowed to have our phones in studio, but okay, the producers allowed that or perhaps enticed it. I wish watching the messages, I was watching the messages as they came in. Hashtag team us, hashtag put a ring on it. And it was as simple as. So clearly, Charlena wasn't phased. Charlena wasn't moved. She wasn't, she wasn't anything. It really didn't affect her at all. So continuing with them, so 
Now, although it does take two to tango, Milan is not the one in the relationship. And she didn't come on there to be loyal to the woman. Um, she came to date their men, which Charlie willingly signed up for. I just think that because she's pregnant, she's more willing to forgive him since she wants her family to work. Otis denied the young lady the entire time, even though I actually believe her in a certain regard, because she has nothing to lose. I personally felt like a baby should have waited, but I'm not the one in the relationship. Now am I? Now Charlie is literally on a defending spree, defending Otis, defending herself, defending the pregnancy. She's just on defense. She's defending everything. And on the one part, I understand because she's pregnant. She wants her family to work. She wants people to accept that Otis is her child's dad. Otis is the person she's probably thinking of marrying. And Otis is here to stay, essentially. But because of the way Otis was edited and also the way Otis acted throughout the process, people are not really team Otis. So I feel like it's an uphill battle to try to convince people of Otis's significance, of his attraction, but she could do whatever she feels like she needs to do. That's her business. Now, let's move over to Kenneth and Shorty. As I mentioned already, he definitely came on to prove a point that Shorty was the one who made less, but he could have simply stated what he came into the relationship with as opposed to exposing her business to prove his point. It still didn't land, so that failed. Shorty definitely didn't want to answer the question about Dr. Nicole. She already stated on her social media that Dr. Nicole didn't pay her any mind. I definitely saw that Dr. Nicole favored she and our Fonzo more than anybody else. It to me seemed as if the other um, couples were supporting cast members and she and Alfonso were the um, center couple. Shorty also made a great point which was essentially why did he know her financial business when she did not make that information readily available to him. That's truly disgusting. I don't believe anything he says. Shorty indeed came on the show to break up with him and that's essentially why he thinks she's conniving. And I'd think so too if I was Kenneth. He was definitely blindsided, but why come on the show to do this? I guess she thought it was the easiest way to get rid of him. Some logic. However, Shorty did come on Dr. Nicole. Sorry, not Dr. Nicole. Shorty did come on Crystal's channel to explain everything she had to go through with Kenneth. She spoke about the fact that he was an absentee dad. He barely spent time with his child and that essentially at one point he kidnapped his child. Um, I guess to make Shorty feel that he was an active parent until Shorty found out that no, he actually took the child for longer than he was supposed to. I also learned that he never, he said, according to Shorty, he never essentially wanted to be a dad. That wasn't his priority. The priority was his career. He's an actor, I guess, and he wants to be in entertainment. The lie that Kenneth told in the beginning of the relationship was that he was a general contractor and having all these contracting jobs and stuff like that. Only for Shorty to later find out that no, he was a construction worker and he worked sporadically like his job was not steady. The money that came from the job he worked was not steady income. What it looked like to me based on what Shorty was saying on Crystal's channel was that Kenneth just wanted a woman to leech off of. Despite him mentioning what Shorty had, it apparently was more than what he had. And so he found an opportunity to live with this woman, to live off this woman, and he took that opportunity, allegedly. And according to Shorty, what he would do was a bit of financial abuse, I guess, because what he would do was pay half of his rent, and he'd paid very late and paid very reluctantly. And so... Whenever they had a fight or disagreement, he would try to take the money back. Where, whether it be to use her phone to cash up himself that money or whether it be to ask for that money back. Which is crazy to me because he lived in the house with Shorty. So what sense does it make for you to pay the rent late 
and then t wanting to take your money back when you're a fight and you still lived in the house so essentially that man didn't care about being a leader he didn't care about providing he simply he was a, he is a very selfish individual and only cared about himself essentially um so what else He was definitely blindsided by the by what came of the show, um, and on the show we um, found out that she came on the show with the intention to leave him mentally. She had already left him, which was a surprise to him. She tried to convey the way she the reason why she came onto the show with him was because she felt like that's the only way he could get professional counseling because he was opposed to it otherwise, and she felt like if she could have gotten him them on a show where he would have gotten counseling but he would have also been able to get the publicity that he wanted like that that would have convinced him to get on the show and it did it really did and um, at the ending of the show he spoke about oh he has a new movie coming out and blah 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 and He's talking about a new movie coming out, but then seeing that Shorty is the crowd chaser, make it make sense to me. I don't understand. Anyway, um, so he was blindsided. I still think there was a bit of her that wanted to still be with him, but, you know, I guess she's not going to want to admit that part. In regards to Shorty's intern, she was going in extra tough on those dates. But all of a sudden, you want to put a pause and say that he needs to work on some things spiritually and all that. She also proved Shorty's point, which is that he's not ready to lead, especially when he needs help from a partner to get him where he needs to go. She clearly doesn't want to be the one to do that for him. I don't know many women that will for long. I actually disagree with the host that Kenneth put up when he saw Maisha. All that was was vengeance towards Shorty. She was no, she was not, there was no genuine interest in that girl. Shorty was held accountable for her part in accepting him for so long, then berating him. But as she said, she tried to leave, but he attempted to ruin her life every time she did. Let me know what you guys thought of the reunion. It was brief, but to the point, I think it was okay. I mean, it was kind of boring because we didn't get too much fight. It was like that person said that and that was it, you know. Um, the only fight we got was um, Kenneth, who was coming for Shorty. But to be honest with you, he simply came for her so that he could belittle her and... Um, I guess it didn't work because everybody already saw a side of him that he was trying so hard to hide. We saw it, you know, although I truly, I believed her that he was how she said he was. But for some people, the way he was edited, it was made to seem as if Shorty was the one belittling him and kind of abusing him, so to speak. And so when we saw the abusive side of him, everybody changed their minds. That's why it's, 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 it's. It's just easier to be believe the woman because she knows what she's saying. She knows what she has to deal with. She knows what she has to live with on a day-to-day -day basis. And you don't. All you have to go off was what editors chose to post on the show. We found out behind the scenes that, you know, when he took her phone, that the producers helped get her phone back. The producers helped helped her delete information from his phone the producers really helped her behind the scenes but there was no real help on the show so to speak i mean in terms of for professional counseling purposes there was no real, real help for them anyways you guys let me know what you think about the reunion um like subscribe and, and see you next time um for another review Bye bye